Okay, good afternoon, guys and gals. How we doing? Looks like Gerald's ready to rock and roll. So um, let's go ahead and uh, go over things. How are we doing this evening? Everybody have a good day today. Great trend day in crude. Great day. Let's go. Um, one second. How are we doing? Everybody doing good tonight? Hey, Veronica. Traveling, huh? Everything doing well? How you been doing, Earl? Good? Leo, how you doing? Hey, Ted. Steve, good evening. Making ticks. I like it, buddy. All right. Let's go. Um, let's get right into it. Um, Gerald, uh, are you ready to record? I want to record this for you guys and gals. A lot of traders couldn't make it tonight, so we'll um, record this, make sure I get the why from him here first before we get going. All right. Yeah, he's, he's ready to go. All right, let, let's get started. I don't want to keep you guys uh, too long. I know everybody has busy schedules, and um, I want to keep it too long. I want I want to start having conference calls like this um, once a month. We're actually going to do this once a month just so traders can get muscle memory on how to trade order flow. As we know, um, all these futures markets are all electronically traded markets. So if you have the right tools, uh, then you can look to take advantage of the wrongly positioned traders that are trading these electronically with traded markets. And that's what I try to do. I try to put uh, together something that is very simple and easy to uh, comprehend, but yet very, very powerful and very sophisticated on the back end of things. Because when we program these indicators, they are strictly due to order flow. These are not lagging indicators. They do not repaint. You won't see our Fibonacci arrows if you lease the program and you plug and play our system. These do not repaint. You will see all winners and all losers on all markets. So you'll know right away once you get involved with our system if the system is going to help you in your trading. And um, that's one unique thing. When I first started looking into these markets in the 1990s, uh, late 80s, actually in commodities, soybeans and corn, and then in the 90s really got involved, is that the indicators that I purchased, they would repaint. A uh, high would be, it's say, to short the market and then the high would be taken out and that indicator would erase and then it would look beautiful after the fact and you can never back test the system well that's something we did not do with this system uh, this system my fib arrows they are static once they come up they will stay on there my, uh, my sim dots are static um, and uh, market delta is static once that data is processed it looks at strictly order flow so um, you know, and that's something that's very unique with our system, and that puts us above a lot of vendors out there because a lot of a lot of uh, um, a lot of uh, uh, strategies or a lot of um, indicators they repaint, and we don't want that. So I'm going to show you today how we put this together, and um, what we try to do is strictly look for the basis of it is look for retracement trading. We are retracement traders. Um, 15%, around 15%, 20% of the time, we will look to counter trend trade the market, but typically around 80% is based upon trend trading. And what does that mean? We have a trend chart, which I'm going to go over. I'm going to show you, this is today's trading for crude over a 12-hour period. Actually, it was from, yeah, uh, in the morning, right around, what, 7 o'clock all the way down to the close. It's actually ticking right now. So these are all the, I'm going to show you how you can, uh, uh, look to get in entries like this on crude. Now, you know your your stop uh, your stop will be the same on all these trades. It's always you're always going to put your stop two ticks above the swing high. So I'm going to show you how we like to enter these trades. Uh, but the stop is always going to be two ticks above after entry, no matter what. The hard stop is always two ticks above. Our system is accurate enough where we do not need to have large stops. We do not need to average in or average down. Average down is the worst thing you can do as a trader because if you think it's uh, it's going to go, um, if, it, if it blows through your stop and you think it's going to stop at the next level, it could blow through that level and that level and that level, that level. So what we like to do is we just like to keep a hard stop. Our system is accurate enough using order flow of the market that we have a hard two tick stop. And the reason I'm going over stops first and because stops are the most important thing is that if you can keep your stops in, uh, and 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 
make sure uh, all the stops are only two ticks below the swing, high or swing low after entry, then what it does, it reduces a lot of risk and increases what's called your reward to risk. A lot of traders call it risk to reward. I call it reward to risk. We're trying to go for four to six to one reward to risk. We're trying to look for the 40 to 60 tick trades. And then um, if it's a chop day, we're not going to achieve that. We know that. Then we're going to bat singles. But mainly what we try to do is a four to six to one, meaning I'm going to show you off of our entry chart, our average stop uh, from our traders, and, and the traders will attest to this, that are live members in the room that trade live monies. We have an average of 11 tick stop on crude with our order entry system that we like to use, our market delta. The market delta we use is a right, right around 11 ticks. So now if you have a better fill, then, I mean, uh, uh, if you have a 10 tick, you may have a 10 tick or 9 tick, and you may have a 12 tick. So with slippage, or you may get a better fill. So if you do limit orders, you can even have a better fill than that. But typically, if you're selling the bid and buying the ask uh, with a system like this, then your average stop is 110. And I think that's very important. Uh, Phil, Fibonacci ears, do they paint over or under the bars they appear? Yes, and I'm going to go over that. They do not delay. Once the bar closes, Phil, it's real time. There's no delay at all. I'll show you today. We were four for four in the morning on um, on our Fibonacci arrows on our retracement trading, and we're three for three in our momentum trading in the morning trading. And I'll show you that too. But they, they, no, they do not. There's no lag in them. There's no three, three, four, five bars later. Once uh, the bar prints, you should see the arrow pop right above the bar. Okay, so it doesn't wait three, four, five, six bars. It prints live. That's a great question. If you guys have questions as we roll, then I'll let you. I'll answer for you. But I want to go over stops first. Uh, that's where I place these um, little arrows above. Um, I think a great stop for any type of uh, uh, entry that we do is two ticks above the swing high and swing low. I think that's the best way to. Uh, to control risk because let's face it none of us knows where the market can go all we can do is put our best tools to work and trade order flow as long as we trade order flow, if you think about it these are electronically traded markets so if they're electronically traded the the pit and we have uh, a couple floor traders that were longtime floor traders over 10 years in the room and they will tell you the floor traders in the room that uh, order flow is, is where it's at but the floor had the power back in the 80s and 90s the floor is obsolete now. I mean, the trading floor is obsolete. It used to be the big contract on the S&P controlled all the volume. You know, now it's the ES. Now the ES controls all the volume on the market. So as far as the S&Ps go, and 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 if you think about that, that's because the pit doesn't have the control. So order flow now is strictly electronically traded market. So you got to have the tools to understand that when this money's coming in, it's all about supply and demand. There's buyers and there's sellers. And the tools that we provide you is we provide you to show you that battlefield between buyers and sellers. Because if there's less sellers, then the market will go up. If there's less buyers, the market will go down. It's very simple. And that's, I'm going to show you the tools that we use um, to, to look at the internals of the market. This is not my opinion when to buy and sell. This is not Gerald's opinion. And you should have no opinion about the market, none of us. And I think that's one thing that why a lot of our long-term traders, you saw Earl, uh, you know, uh, saying he's making ticks, and he's one of our long-term members in the room. Uh, Veronica, Steve, Leo, all, all these traders have been long-term members. Thomas, you know, it's they're, they're, they're members in the room for a reason is that, you know, they understand order flow. And order flow is a key for us. If we can't understand order flow, then we're, we're done right from the start, you know, we cannot guess where the market's going to go tomorrow. I have no idea where the market's going to go tomorrow. I don't have a projection where the market's going to go tomorrow. I don't want to have a projection. I want the money coming in the market when I'm, when I'm looking at these markets to tell me what to do. Am I net buyer for the day or am I net seller for the day? And that's what the system will do. So if you look at these trades on crude, these are inflection points, big inflection points that my system projected today to sell. And we were in a downtrending market today. Now, at the end of the afternoon session, we started cruising back up, so right here it got a nice long. But the, the bottom line is is that we were pretty much net sellers all day today. Now, here's another thing too, is that you can have your own trailing stop where if this is the 
a big trade we had in the morning that we went over this morning. We had a huge sell inflection point right here, right there, and it caught the high of the market right here. If you got a nice trailing stop, this trail got stopped out because it's a tight trail. But some traders, they'll hold this market and they'll let it trail all the way down. And that's fine. And, and we show you how to do that. I just wanted to show you that there's several entry points during the day with a system like this. But if you've got a good trailing system, this is a huge sell force today. These two spots right here had two big sell points on my trend chart. There's a second one. This one. Uh, happened right at 9 o'clock and this one happened right around 10 o'clock. These were the two big sell points and at that bar, when that bar formed on both of them, it caught the high with an 11 tick hard stop on both of them. So it showed you how to look for it. How do you account for volatility? A volatility, uh, Greg, is this, is it the bottom line, I don't care if the market is volatile or non-volatile. I mean, we don't pretty much look at, back in the day, you could look at the VIX for volatility. You don't really need to do that anymore because electronic trading markets, you're going to have buyers and sellers pretty much all day. So the volatility naturally creates itself. And the thing about what this system is, is that it's going to tell you um, if you have extremely high volume coming in the market or extremely low volume because the market, if it's trending, my trend chart will pick it up. If it's flat, my trend chart will pick it up. So if there's low volatility, we know how to trade that off market profile too. So we can trade low volatility and we can trade major volatility. This doesn't have to have major volatility to work. We can have extremely low volatility and trade in between my market profile lines that create natural support and resistance. And um, I teach traders how to do that. That's a great question. So, um, so I'm going to show you now. So I just want to show you this is what we try to do. We try to put, uh, uh, put um, uh, we try to sell retracements, sell retracements. All these are retracement trades, retracement trades with the overall trend direction. But how do you know to get into these these levels? What what is it? Can we? I mean, is there is there a plan that we can implement per day to look to implement um, uh, these trades like this? Now, these trades, if you look at, if I blow this up, this is with slippage already built in. Because if you if all traders know that trade live money is in the room, that you get filled not at the open of the next bar, you're going to get slippage. It's usually one tick or right at the low of that bar that prints. So typically you're going to get filled right there, right? Or one tick right there below. So these trades right here are accounting, accounting for slippage, not it, a best case scenario, you get an open of the next bar. I don't like to show that because it's unrealistic. You're not going to get this bar is not going to form a Fibonacci arrow and you get the opener at the next bar. It doesn't work that way. And, and when you're trading live monies and, and so on, you get the low of the printed bar, you know, low of the printed bar here. I got one tick below it because that's more realistic for you guys and gals who are trading these markets. So when you look at the system and you're evaluating the system, when a fib arrow comes up, look at the low of the bar where that fib arrow came up. Look at the low of that bar, and that's going to tell you on the low of that bar where your fill would have been if you're trying to trade monies live. Because that's very important if you understand that because a lot of traders think that when an arrow fires uh, off, you're going to get filled right at the open of the next bar. It doesn't happen that way. So it's typically the low of the bar. But even then, you're at about 11 tick stop. You know, and that's a beautiful thing about the system. All right. So let me show you. Let me match up. Let's look at these two trades on why they were entries. Actually, these first three trades. Let's look at why they were entries. But I want to go over stops first because that's very important for me is that you must contain risk. Uh, you know, if this trade doesn't work out and you get short right here, uh, right after uh, my Fib arrow, my Fib arrows came at all these levels. My Fib arrows fired every single one of these levels. So when, once my Fib arrow fired and then you get short and let's say it blows through that high by two ticks, you need to stop yourself out according to my rules uh, because I do not like to, to I don't do not like to educate traders to take big losses. I, I don't don't like it. I'd never have and I never like to educate that way. So if the trade's not going to work out, listen to me, doubling up on contracts, let's say it blows through this high after the February arrow comes up and it blows through the high and you want to add more contracts here. Because then it'll average your position in the middle. That's the worst thing you can do. You know, we we had some traders come from several vendors who they show SIM accounts 
uh, on there and they keep doubling their position, doubling their position until they make money and then they post their results. You know, if you see a system that's 90% or so on, it's probably because they average down and they keep averaging down until they can get out of the position. And a lot of vendors try to show that. So I don't like to, I'm, I'm very black and white. If it, if it, if this, if the trade's not going to work out, you should stop yourself out because you got to maintain risk. And I think that's very important for traders to understand that when traders, when trades do not work out, you want to take a small stop. So that's why I want to start out with this conference call is that today we were on fire. I mean, the system was just absolutely phenomenal, which I'll show you. Um, but if you do get into a stop, make sure it's two ticks above the swing high or swing low. Okay. So let's get rolling. Let's show you, show you why these were trades with the templates that we put up for you. Now this does work on all futures, stocks, currency, and Forex markets. Believe it or not, we got traders that trade ETFs on it, and I have a few traders that trade uh, OEX options on it. So um, it, can, um, it, it can be traded on all markets, uh, no matter what you look at. It's very universal. So these templates I show you, it's a plug and play system, it meaning you put on your Ninja Trader, it's plug and play, and there you go. So let's, let's, let's go to work and let's see what we got here. Here is the basis, and we'll come back to that chart in a second I just showed you. Let's take a look at the first trade I circled. Let's go left to right analysis. This is our trend chart, okay? The one thing that, if there's one thing you take from this conference call, and it doesn't matter if you, you try out our, 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 our uh, indicators or other indicators down the road, you know, the one thing you have to understand is that you have to get the trend right. The market can only do two things, and don't make this difficult on yourself. It's either going to go to vertical or it's going to go sideways. And you got to remember that. And I tell traders this all the time: is that when you sit down at your trading desk, you got to tell yourself: is this market market in it, in it going vertical or is it sideways? What does that mean? Am I trending, meaning it's going vertical? This is obviously a downtrend. I'll show you how we do it. Uh, then you only want to take sell setups. You don't want to try to fade or counter trend trade the market. And I'm going to show you how we can catch wrongly positioned or counter trend traders, because wrongly positioned and counter trend traders are they help us get into the trades that we want to get into with low risk within around 11 tick stop. So that's very important you understand is this trend chart is very vital. Let's break it down. The trend chart is based upon this. I have our own, I designed our own Renko bar. Now there's several Renko bars out there in the market. There's actually quite a few. This is not your standard Renko bar. Uh, feel free if you ever want to take a trial in the room and put uh, another Renko bar like a mean Renko or RJ Rinko, there's so many Rinko bars, it's crazy. And you see if it matches up with ours. It's totally different. Because these Rinko bars that I created have multiple trend filters built in. What does that mean? It's actually looking at the scope of trend. And it actually looks at scope of trend based upon when that candle's formed. If it's a red candle, that's distribution. If it's a green candle, that's accumulation. Meaning if it's a green candle, there's more buyers and sellers. If there's a red candle, there's more sellers and buyers. Right, what I wanted to do, I wanted a visual interpretation of market delta on my trend chart. Because market delta, we all know, is a relationship between the bid and the ask. I'll show you to the bottom right here. That we all know that's order flow. So I wanted a quick interpretation on any chart out there that we can see, just real quick, that we can see based upon supply and demand. And that was very, very key for me when I designed this. Ninja 7 could not even run our program at the time because it takes, I have a lot of Fibonacci calculations going on and it would stall. It literally would stall until Ninja 8, uh, Ninja 7, Ninja 8, Ninja 6 and 7 could not run it. When Ninja 8 came out, I was, I was able to program all the tools that I wanted to put this all together. And that's what's kind of cool about this because Ninja 8 runs a lot smoother and you can do more calculations with it. There's a lot of mathematical calculations going in and my Fibonacci analysis was the same. And also my trend filters, a lot of, uh, with the market delta, looking between the bid and the ass, there's a lot of data going through these indicators because these indicators are not simply just bar indicators. You know, when you see that bar form on the trend chart, if it turns red or green, it means something. That means their internals of the market are telling you there's net buyers and net sellers in the market. And I'm going to show you how we do that. Phil, are you using an indicator-based trailing stop? And if so, how do I use trailing active to offset your open cards to do the reach? Yeah, you can do indicator, Phil, or you can do manual. It depends if you use chart trader. Um, 
a lot of traders uh, uh, with chart traders kind of cool if you when you manually get in you can click on it and just trail from the previous highs I like this I like previous swing highs to trail so if you're manually doing it you can click chart trader and drag it manually from your last swing and also I use sim dots to do that also and I can go over that a little bit later on trailing that's another whole another subject trailing is the last thing that that we do which is important but it's something that I can show you how to do that um, but we like look at the swings to do our trails so um, if you look at the uh, trend chart then um, how how do we how do we look at this there's three moving averages on this trend chart this trend chart but yeah, a lot on the ES. I'll show you the ES and the NQ uh, PK. I'll show you that after the, uh, after we get done here. I'll show you the trend chart on both of them. There's a lot on the NQ. That's actually uh, some of our traders' favorite market. So what we like to do then is this. We have three moving averages on the trend chart. The key for the trend chart is this. Moving averages are worthless. They mean absolutely nothing for support and resistance. You don't know if it's going to stop at the 200, the 50 moving average, the 34, the 20 EMA, the 13 EMA, or the simple, or the exponential, or the weighted moving average. You have no clue. I have no clue. Moving averages have no clue. They're lagging. Moving averages are absolutely useless for support and resistance or crossover systems. They're useless. However, they're great for trend direction. So what I do on the trend chart is I like to see when my candle, because I got a trend filter built in, when I'm closing below a body of the candle, when I'm closing a body of the candle below, body of the candle is closing below all my three moving averages right here, I know I'm in a hard trend down. I know I'm in a hard trend. I'm below my large, large, intermediate, and small. And I see that first green bar that forms. That green bar that forms tells me that right there, you got counter trend traders going against trend. Yeah, yeah, Earl does a great job on NQ. PK, well, he's one of our long-term members in the room. Is that? Uh, but that's um, that green bar right there tells me I got counter trend traders. I'm looking for a retracement trade. And and what happened? As soon as that bar formed, our Fibonacci arrow came up right there, and we got a big short. And that was on that chart I just showed you. That was an entry. That was an entry. So let's go back and look at entries first, and I'm going to show you how this thing works and put this thing together. There's only two setups you need to learn in this trading room. What I've done is I've simplified this. Um, before Ninja 8, we couldn't put all these things together because we, we, we'd have red dots uh, to show sell, uh, which were, was J signal, and we have blue dots for buy with J signal. And, but it, what happened is when I tried to add Fibonacci arrows and all this stuff, it would lag. And I did not want it to lag. So we waited until Ninja 8, and then we programmed all the indicators in Ninja 8, and this thing runs very, very smooth. It doesn't, it doesn't shut down. Ninja 7 was shutting down on us with this system because I had so many mathematical formulas going in, is that now it runs smooth. So what we can do now is I have everything built into the trend chart and my fib, my fib charts for, with arrows, not dots anymore. And now what I can do is I can literally tell when counter trend traders are coming in because I have a filter built in. So we have two trades then we look for. The market, I told you, can only do two things. It can go vertical and go sideways. If it's going vertical, these moving averages will be all crossed down, and you'll be below all three MAs. And you don't have to be below all three MAs. My smaller MA just needs to be crossed below my intermediate and my large MA. The price can come back in the middle here. It doesn't bother me because it's a retracement trade. But you know you're getting a really a great retracement trades when you're below all three. That's the weakest part of the market. That is the weakest part of the market, and you're good to go to go for Fibonacci analysis. So what, what is a retracement trade? If I only have two setups I look for, how do I do it? What's the best way for me to get in here and do this? What I like to do, a retracement setup, is catching counter trend traders. If you notice, we know that the trend is down. I'm below. The easiest way for me is when I see that small, um, small MA cross down through my larger MA, it's pretty much telling you, you see a big gap. You're in, a, you're in a hard trend down. I like, I like to say, to tell traders, it looks like a car driving down through a big, you know, uh, middle of, uh, I mean, uh, snow tracks or you know, your car tires, because you can see them, they're going parallel with each other on the way down. That's hard trend, right? In a, in a flat market, you'll see these three moving averages go horizontal, not vertical, or not angled. You'll see them horizontal. Then we just trade off market profile. But 
we're going down. So I have two setups I look for then. If I'm trending down, you typically, since we've opened this trading room and since I've had experience in the market, you typically trend three days and chop two days. Chop two days meaning you're going sideways. You, you form symmetrical wedges, you form sideways, and then you break out, retest, go back into trend. So typically you're going to see about three in crude, gold, and all these other markets, gasoline. You're going to see trend days like this where there you go vertical. And vertical trading with this system is marvelous because we can tell when the counter trend traders are coming in. So let's first go over the retracement trade. How can we look to pop in on a trade like that? The retracement trade is, is very, very, very simply, very easy, is that you want to see an opposite color candle come in. Let me blow this up. If you are trading the markets, and you're obviously in a downtrend right here, you see you got your small MA cross down right here. This inflection point, when you close below all three MAs, on my trend filter, that's typically when this market starts getting really weak. So red bar, red bar, red bar, red bar. If you are away from my smaller MA, and I'm going to educate you about something. A lot of traders don't understand this. Everything is open to close relationship. Nothing, all amateur traders think the wicks are important, the highs and the lows of a bar. They are absolutely worthless in my opinion. Everything is open versus closed because that's strictly order flow. So the opening buyers versus the opening sellers. You know, who's going to win that battle? Open versus closed. If I got a higher close, a higher close than the open, then the buyers won. If I got a lower close in the open, then the sellers won. And that's very important for you to understand. And that's something that that's one of the uh, characteristics I like to look at when when trading these markets is that when I see a green bar come in the market against trend filter, this is a long term time frame. I did, uh, I, this is a long time frame, long rank of bar. If I see a green bar come in, that alerts me. That alerts me that I'm looking for a retracement trade. That first green bar tells me I have a, excuse me, a trade set, set up coming up called a retracement trade. Now, I told you there's only two setups every day we look for. We look for a retracement trade and a momentum trade. The characteristic of a retracement trade is you must have an opposite color bar that forms or you cannot take a retracement trade. The characteristic of a momentum trade, which is a shallow retracement, is I want all bars being red. If I'm trying to sell or try to get a momentum trade, which they're fast, and they, they can produce quite a few ticks relatively in a short period. If I'm in looking for a momentum trade, I want all red bars or all green bars if it's an uptrend. But if I'm trading a retracement trade, I'm going to look for an opposite color candle. So here's an opposite color candle that came in. What do you do now? The opposite color candle comes in. How can we look to execute a trade in the market? No matter what market you look at, like I said, this works on all futures. You know, we got traders that trade all kinds of different futures. Stocks, currency, Forex, doesn't matter. It works all the same. So once you get a green candle comes in, it alerts you saying, hey, I got a retracement trade. I want to look at the chart right next to it. Then I want to look at this chart right here. This is very important that I want to look at. This chart will tell me I'll take the momentum trade off. Let me blow this up. This chart is called a retracement setup chart. Now we have these templates built up where it's going to look like this. When, when you when you download it on your own system, it's going to look like this. You're going to see this chart, which is called the retracement chart, and then you see a momentum chart right next to it, and then you see market delta below it. You can move these anywhere you want on the templates, but that's how the templates are made. I like looking left to right because I got market profile beside it right here. I'll show you later how we use that. That's how our templates are set up. Okay, so I just want to show you the trend with these charts right now. That's how it's programmed. I mean, that's how we, uh, when we download on your system, that's what, that's what it's going to look like. But let's look at the retracement setup. This chart right here is for when the opposite color bar goes against trend. We use this chart with market delta. If it's all red and these fib arrows fire over here, then we use this chart. So let me explain this a little bit slower to you understand. If I have all red bars on blow all three MAs, and I get the first green bar that comes in, I only want to look at this chart. I do not look at this chart whatsoever. This chart means nothing to me to the far right, my momentum setup. Those Fibonacci arrows mean absolutely zero to me because they are geared towards shallow retracements. What I've done is I programmed my Fibonacci arrows to fire off on shallow retracements and deep retracements. And they are totally two different type of setups. 
So what I want to do is I want to look at if I get an opposite color bar that comes in, which we did here on the trend chart, I want to look at the retracement chart, not the momentum chart. If I were just cruising down in all red bars, I'm staring at the momentum chart, not so much the retracement chart. And I think that's very, very important for you guys to understand that to help you so there's no paralysis by analysis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we like to enter these trades. So we know an opposite color bar comes in. An opposite bar comes in. Here's one right here. Okay. So at this time, at this level, it's this retracement bar. So let's take a look at it. That's that, that guy right there. That's how they match up. All right. So what I want to do is this. Green bar forms, I'm looking at this chart. Now, here's how you can look to get into the market. What I want to do as a trader then is I want to see I have what's called symmetry dots. Now, symmetry dots, um, we, do, we don't lease them to traders. We got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of trader, traders around the world that use these things for natural support and resistance. What I learned a long time ago is they create natural support and resistance in the market. We charge a very minimum fee, $297 for life, and that's lifetime. You know, it's very, very, very pennies on the dollar for what you get because it's, we don't lease it to you. It's just a one-time thing. So we, we like traders to put on their own charts because they create natural support and resistance. But by themselves, they're worthless by themselves because you don't know. They create natural support and resistance, but what's the trend? You don't know the trend of the market, right? So you don't know where to buy if they're going to create support and resistance on the upside or downside. But if you use a trend filter with them, they really work great because what happens is this. I know I'm in a downtrend on the trend filter already. I know I got a green bar that formed and it closed. So I know I'm catching counter trend traders or rolling position traders, I call them. So now I can start looking at this chart, my retracement chart. Now I know my SIM dots create natural resistance. If you look at every one of these trades, SIM dots held on every single one of them. They held on every single one, and then we go into momentum setup right here which I'm going to show you. These are momentum trades right here. So retracement trades are deeper retracements. What happens is if when you get looking for a trade, when this forms green, see where the SIM dots are because they typically, the market will come up to these SIM dots when the couple ticks and you're looking for a Fibonacci area to fire or negative market delta with an order imbalance, which I'll show you. So when you see this, they typically come right up to my SIM dots within a couple ticks. Now, it can exceed it. It just you don't want them to close above it because then you broke resistance. But that's, those are the deeper retracements you get, right? So that's, that's why I like this chart. I love this chart because it gives me an area to start looking for negative market delta and Fibonacci arrows to fire. So when it closes a green bar here on this trade, it closes a green bar here. On the retracement, we already knew that that's resistance. Look for a nice Fibonacci arrow to fire, negative market delta to pop us in the trade, and then there is your setup. Now, let me show you how we use market delta right below there so you understand what I'm talking about. Market delta is very cool because it's a relationship between the bid and the ask on buyers versus net sellers. So let's say that, that you get a Fibonacci arrow that fires here. You want to see negative market delta because negative market delta, it tells you that there's more sellers than there are buyers. And what, what I like to see is I made a bar for you guys and gals that looks like this. This is a vertical bar. This is a vertical, uh, looks like a vertical bar right here, right? Nice vertical bar. If there's not red, it's not green. This is called an indecision bar. I call it a supply demand bar because it means the buyers are equal in the sellers. If I see that bar fire off with the Fibonacci arrow after counter trend traders come in with a negative market delta below, see that big red box? That is a big sign that they're trying to roll the market right there at that exact bar. Now, let me take this a step further. You see this number, 596. 596 is a number that tells you are there, are there, are, are, do you have more selling pressure than buying pressure. Anything over 200 on crude oil, and every market has its own relationship. Gold is anything over 50. Anything over 200, it is a big sell imbalance. So when I see I have a Fibonacci arrow fires, I want to confirm it between the bid and the ask and my market delta if I have 
a negative market delta to go with it. If I do, especially if it's over 200, negative 200 or positive 200, you have a huge possible move in the market. So that's what we use. We use market delta as a last entry technique to say, hey, I know the Fib arrow fired. I know the counter trend traders are coming in. I know I'm on resistance on market profile or, or my SIM dots, right? Do I have an order and balance right here, a sell balance, where they're trying to roll this market over to the exact bar? That's what helps you out because once this bar formed, it told you that that's your entry. Your stop loss now is two ticks above the swing high. You have a small stop, and there you go. And if you go back through the day on market delta, and you look at these major swings in these markets, here we have major swings in the morning. The two I was going over live this morning right here. These are the three major inflection points. Now watch this. I just showed you where the major inflection point was this morning. Oh, here it was, 8 o'clock. Here's some big ones that I went over live in the room. If you look at that bar right here, look at the vertical bar. Look at the vertical bar. The vertical bar came in. That's an indecision bar with negative market delta when my Fib arrows fired. And look at the order and balance. Let me bring it back to you so you understand what market delta, how good it is. Negative 310. Anything over 200 is a big selling balance. Big selling balance. Market tanks. Negative 331. That is with a vertical bar. I like seeing that relationship when they match up. Because when that vertical bar comes up, it tells me that the buyers are off. Now the buyers and sellers are neutral. Because if it's a green bar, you have to remember something. My Rinko bar and all these time frames have a couple trend filters built into them already. So I have several trend filters built into these Rinko bars. These are not standard open, low, high, close bars. So if it closes green, net accumulation. If it closes red, net distribution. If it goes neutral, and it sees a vertical bar, you have a possible inflection point. You have a possible rollover all by itself, only just with market delta by itself. And that indecision bar can roll the market all by itself, just between the bid and the ask, without any analysis, without Fibonacci, without trend chart, without market profile, all by itself. It has a chance to roll the market, right, if you got the right trend uh, uh, in, in effect. So you could see that, these are major highs when you're, you're in a downtrend. So what I want to do if I'm in a downtrend on the trend chart, oops, if I'm in a downtrend on the trend chart, I want to look for these. Here's an M top. This is what an M top looks like. M top, look at that vertical bar, negative 337. Market just starts moving down pretty hard. So this is what started the whole trend today if you look at it. If I look at those major bars that came up with negative market delta, and those are one in the afternoon, I mean uh, early around 9.45, I'm sorry, here's 10, that's a big one, I, and I just showed you these on these charts, look at these time frames, on the, I'll show you that chart on these entry charts, these were the entries with vertical bars, there's another vertical bar, major market delta, because it was a market profile trade, I'm not market profile trade, but trend chart trade with negative market delta, so in other words, negative market delta is really, when it matches up, I like seeing these guys match up like that, when you have a vertical bar and as far as that goes. So that's how we use market delta. Market delta is at the bottom right. It's used for entry. We want to use this for entry as a last thing to say, hey, do we have an order balance? Because we trade order flow in here, okay? So let's put this all together again. So these three charts are really, really nice because you have your trend chart. There's your trend chart. So there's our first trade right there when the opposite color green candle came in. It comes up, and right here was our, right there was this setup. Mark comes down. Red, red bar, red bar, red bar, red bar, red bar, red bar. First green bar comes in. We have a retracement set up again. Start watching this chart. Sure enough, we come up right and butts up against it. We get a Fibonacci arrow fires, nails the high. And this is what I want to show you, too. When this bar closes, that arrow is going to form. Now check this chart out too. I love when these charts have the vertical bar come with them. Watch. Check this out. You can cherry pick trades like this. Look how I got the vertical bar that came up right here, my indecision bar, or call supply demand. Here's all these counter trend traders pump the market back up on this first bar right here, pumping it back up. And then you got that big vertical bar right there. There's your vertical bar. Negative market delta came in right at that bar. If you see these line up like that, and this one too, see that vertical bar with the Fib arrow right on top of it? That Fib arrow is going to form when that bar closes. 
It doesn't wait one, two, three, four, five bars. Right when that bar closes, it's going to form. I like cherry picking trades, telling traders to educate them to cherry pick trades like that because I know my trend chart's in a hard downtrend. So I don't have to be the smartest bear in the woods to realize if I have an indecision bar that comes up with the Fibonacci arrow contained within symmetry and my trend chart is giving counter trend traders, I don't have to be the smartest bear in the woods to realize I have a pause in the market for a continuation to the downside. And that's how this works. And you're going to see a lot of trades like this. If you look, when this second trade came up and you had a retracement trade here, that trade came up. I had a pause in the market on my trend chart, for goodness sakes. Now, when my trend chart pauses, if my trend chart pauses and you get a setup over here, you typically have a huge trade because this doesn't happen very often. But this shows you that now if my trend chart that has all these trend filters built in, if the sellers and buyers equalized after the counter trend traders come in, what do you think is going to happen? If you get negative market delta, sure enough, that's this next trade. You get a huge trade here at 612. I mean, uh, this one right here now. This is a big trade right into 7 o'clock. I believe it happened right over 7 o'clock in the morning. So that's this trade. Look how this trade came right up to it. This trade came right up to it. Right there. There's our trade. And look how that negative market delta caught that high also. But look how the Fib arrow affected that one. Look at the next one. Here's another one. So my point is, is that you can use this trend chart to spot trades. Now let's go to the 846 one. We come to 846. Keep moving along. 846. Now wait. Now watch. 846. All right, 846 right here. Look what happens. What happens? We start running out of Fibonacci arrows. You know what happened? Because momentum trades are coming in. Look what happened between. Here's your last retracement trade. Look what happened between here at 8.42 all the way down to 61.80 or down here at this level. What happened at 61.80 and right there at 50, you have what? Momentum now coming in the market. So you, know, you don't have Fib arrows. So what do you do? Now if there's all red bars, if there's all red bars right here, now we got a momentum set up. Now what do you want to do? You want to start looking for what? You don't want to look at this, this chart for Fibonacci retracements because what happens is the market is not getting us any. We're all red here. So since we're all red on the trend chart over here, see we're all red. Let me put an arrow through all these candles. All these candles are red. So when it's all red, we're not going to get a possibly a green reversal bar, right? So what do we do? We have to look for momentum setups. That's when you use this chart to the right. Because now the market's so weak, look at this, weak, 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 red bars, red bar, closing way away from my, my MAs. I don't have a green bar, red bar, red bar. Look at my Fibonacci arrows that form. Do I have an indecision bar on my small time frame here? Check this out. This is where momentum trading starts coming in. Now check these trades out. I just told you my indecision bar or supply demand bar is a great matchup with market delta. I love it when they form on the five and the three. Look at this. Is this gorgeous or what? I got a vertical, vertical bar, the arrow printed right there when that bar closed. Now, these don't repaint, remember. You, you can see these do not repaint. All members know that. This vertical bar with an arrow and your hard. Look at this. This is when the market's in a hard downtrend, hard downtrend. Now, this up here was happened right here. So the momentum, these trades, I'm sorry, these trades happen here. So those trades happen there, and these trades happen here. So these trades happened over here. And then the next move down, they happen right after this. Watch. But look at the vertical bar. See that vertical bar? Vertical bar tells you buyers are equal to sellers. Look for negative market delta. My Fib arrow caught the high again. It's on fire today, man. It's just on fire. Here we go again. Now watch. Then the market takes a big hit. Now check this out. So this is momentum trading now. Why? Because look at my trend chart. I'm all red bars. Red, 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 red. And then it pauses for each. Here's your retracement trade. There's red, 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 red. So that's momentum trading. You want to concentrate on this chart. So that's how you switch gears. You can look for a retracement trade off of my my sim my sim dot uh, Fibonacci chart. Or if it's all red and the momentum's too hard down, look at the arrows that fire. But watch. I'm gonna. The reason I want to have a conference call. I got those vertical. I programmed the vertical bars that come up with the Fibonacci arrows for a reason. If you see them come together. 
this is the reason that if you look at all these trades, let's go back and look at it. These trades today, these trades today, those trades right here, all these trades happened at those inflection points, every single one. So this chart is generated off of using that system. These trades today were generated off of what I just taught you using A, the retracement trading, and B, the momentum trading. And like I said, if you want to do larger trails, you don't have to trade as much. I mean, this is one, two, three, four, or five trades in the morning, right? You don't have to trade as much, but these trades were generated based upon right here, these arrows, right? On the momentum, when it was red, these arrows right here, when it closed green. So use this chart for your retracement trading because you want to get close to symmetry because you know it's going to go possibly into deep retracement. You don't want to trade momentum setups. Use this chart if you see all red candles. And here's another clue I'll give you. And I'm doing this conference call to help you guys see this because if you understand this, it's, it's crazy, crazy how neat this is. So let's take our momentum chart right here. Let's take it all these trades since 7.30 this morning to 9 and some change. So for an hour and a half, we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven charts. I mean, seven trades. Did they have all vertical bars? One, two, three, four. Yes, they did. Four, five. They all had every single one. So that's kind of cool. They all had vertical bars showing that the, the buyers were off on the retracement, which was nice. But so all those had my technique I'm showing you with the vertical bar showing that the, the seller, I mean the buyers are off and the uh, fib arrow formed right exactly there. And these do not repaint. If you do market replay, all you members, you'll see that these all came exactly the same spot. So, but the point is this, is let me show you a little trick. Trick of the trade, I like to say. Retracement trading is different than momentum trading. Because retracement trading, momentum trading you see the distance between the open versus close, the body of the candle, and the last MA? You see the distance? There's a distance between it. If you start seeing there's distance, and there's wide distance between them both, and your red bar, red bar, the more distance you get, the more distance you get, look for fib arrows to fire on your momentum chart. This is a huge gap right here. So, huge gap. Let's me know. Get ready for a retracement trade. So, when these fire... What they'll do is you'll see inch bar come back up. They'll take back up inch bar, and they'll fire a Fibonacci arrow to get you short. But that's a characteristic. This is a characteristic on momentum versus trend. Momentum, all red bars, all red bars. Retracement, a green bar will form opposite the trend. All right? So, and then we always use market delta down here to confirm. And what I like to look for in market delta and on the Fibonacci charts, I want to see this bar form. This is an indecision between buyers and sellers. It, they're equalizing. And that's not by it. So that's just, that, that's just the trend. That, that's just telling you they're equalizing. But that's not as important as negative market delta. But when they match and you get a match of these two and you get the Fib arrow that fires on one of your retracement trades or momentum trades, you just qualified three different indicators with the trend filter would be four different indicators that all match at the same price point in time. You're matching four indicators. You're matching a large trend chart with two small Fibonacci charts. That's why this is so effective. So that's the key what I want you to do. I want you to remember we use this to go back over it again to make sure we understand. We use this right here this chart for retracement setups, and we use this chart for momentum setups. This is momentum when all red bars are forming, okay? So that's how we like to do things in the room. Now, what do I have over here? I have market profile over here. Now, what's market profile? Market profile has been around since 1985. These levels are absolutely phenomenal. Now, these will move during the day. It caught, it caught the high for us at the control point. So let me go over this real quick, and I'm going to show you what the most important. And I have videos on the website. I know that this video is getting kind of long anyway. But this, 
thick red line, green line, thick blue line, thin red line is the volume coming in the market. It's not my opinion. It's not your opinion. This is all the volume from hedge funds, prop firms, Goldman Sachs, all the hedge funds, all the algorithms, all, all the amateur traders, all the professional traders spitting out support and resistance. So what we like to do is when it comes up against support or resistance and you touch it and you see a fib arrow that fires on it with trend, and that happened three times this morning. It touched the control point right on it and tanked. Touched the HVA and tanked on gold. Touched the LVA and tanked on crude this morning. When these fib arrows fire and you're touching one of my market profile levels, you just added what's called confluence. Because these are very dynamic. These, these are very, 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 very important for support and resistance. Because they can call the trend high and trend low all by itself. Now, these are the two most important. Let me show you. The two most important, I drew the support line in. You can see it bounced off of it. After, uh, um, after I drew it in, it came and bounced. I drew this in at 8 o'clock in the morning. So I drew the support line in at 8.30 and look at 10.30. Do you think it's by just luck that it came right down to it and exploded right off of it? And it came right up to this line, exploded right off of it. Do you think that I'm just dumb lucky that I drew that line in? That's how it's been working since 1985. These levels are uncanny for catching highs and lows in the market, and they will move. They are dynamic where they'll move, and they'll, they'll become static and lock themselves in for support and resistance. You can literally, when I first opened the trading room, you can literally take market profile and market delta and just trade off those two charts all by themselves without anything else because what they create is natural support and resistance. So what happens is the two most important is this. The two most important is this, is the thin red line, thin green line, the thick red, blue, and green. They will create natural support and resistance all day long. So what you can do is you don't have to know everything about market profile. You can just use it for natural support and resistance. So if you get a fib arrow that fires with the overall trend chart direction and it's up against support and resistance on market profile, you got yourself a hell of a trade. Because you're taking an indicator, volume profile has been around since 1994, price has been around since 85. So you're taking an indicator that's been around for, for that many years, that many years. And it stops the market in its tracks. It stopped gold to, to the almost tick today at the high, HVA did. And that's why it's very important. These levels create natural support and res resistance. What they like to do, let's say that the, the market is choppy, and this is how market profile works. All right, let's forget about trend trading right now. I just told you how to trend trade. Trend trade, use a trend chart, look for two setups. Look for a retracement trade, look for a momentum trade. Let's, let, let's, take, let's shift gears and say, hey, what if you are not into a trend market? A lot of traders fail in flat markets. Let's say that. Let's, let's just let's say what happens here. Let's say we're in a flat market. How do, you, do you take Fibonacci arrows? No. Do you take uh, any, any trend trades? No, because you're flat. You're going to know flat because you're going to see your moving averages are just going choppy like that. They're just sideways, chop, 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 chop. We always know what a trend, a, a trend day is, looks like, I mean a flat day, and you'll see it in the room. What you want to do then is you want what's called sell the high by the low. Try to sell the outer edge of profile and try to buy the outer edge on the first and second test. Never trade the control point. The control point is the most volume that's traded in that instrument for the day. That blue line calculates all the volume coming in the market, all the volume. And I don't use a 30-minute market profile. That's for amateur traders. 30-minute market profile, everybody uses. I use a long-term market profile. So when these levels come up, they should stop the market and bounce the market back and forth on any market. Any, the only thing, Forex, because it doesn't measure volume, that's the only thing it'll work on. Everything else, it will measure support and resistance all day long for you. Okay? So. When it come up, comes up and touch it, touches it within a couple of ticks, and I get negative market delta with a indecision bar, then I know that I'm looking for a coast-to-coast -coast trade. What in flat markets, you're going to do this. Play the swing. Up and down. Never trade the blue line. The blue line is only tradable in what, which it nailed the high today because we're in a downtrend. If the downtrend, the control point, it broke it, it retested it, this blue line. That's when you want to trade the control point on days where we are trending because it will come up to it, it will hit it, and it will explode right off of it. For instance, today what happened, the control point was right here. My blue control point was right here at that level, and it looked like this on market profile. 
You had a big blue market profile line. We only use this for trend. Big blue line. So what happened? It was right there. So what happened? We're downtrend. We're smarter than the average opponent. We know that if we're in a downtrend, we don't buy the control point. We let it break retest. What it did, it came down to it. And this is what happens. You came down to it. Old support becomes new resistance. It rotates back up for an ABC short or one, two, three pattern short. And there you go. What happened to my LVA? My LVA was right here, my low value area. This is how you can use market profile for confluence with the arrows. There's my low value. My low value, what it did, do we buy LVA when we're in a downtrend on the market profile? Nope, that's asking to get in trouble. So what we do, we want to let it break, retest. It broke it, closed below it, retested. Arrow fired right there. Now we have confluence on market profile again. So we use market profile pretty much for a break, retest trade. Or if you're in a, in a chop market, we use it to sell the highs, buy the lows, and then wait till we break out, and then we go back into trend. You must know how to, you have to know how to trade chop because you can't trade trend techniques in chop. It's going to stop you out all the time. And I teach you how to do that. You know, we only go vertical, we go sideways. If the trend chart is sideways, uh, you know, we you only use market profile. Sell the outer edges, buy the outer edges. Until we get outside a profile again, look for the retest of it, and then we get back into trend and we jump on the first fib arrow and we try to go to work. That's called a system. It's called being systematic. It's knowing what you're doing. It's, it's being smarter than your trading opponent. You will know how to trade with this system, both trend and chop. So that's how we like to use market profile. We like to use market profile for support and resistance um, for just an added benefit. Right? This is what the template looks like. The template looks like this. Market profile, trend chart. We have a trend chart. We have our Fibonacci for the retracement trades. Fibonacci is for momentum trades when they're all red or green. Market delta for entry. So your template is going to look just like this, okay? That's what your template is going to look like. Now, if I just put a blank chart up, and let's say I look at blank chart on, let's say gold, and you guys want to see other markets. Let's say gold. This is gold for the entire trading day, from midnight all the way to the close. This is the entire trading day. What I want to do, you can see, is this an uptrend or downtrend real quick? Just give me, let me ask you a question. Why did you choose crude and gold? Because I like crude and gold because they're volatile, Phil. But a lot of traders trade the S&P, NASDAQ, Dow, and so on. It works in all markets. Are we in an uptrend or downtrend on the trend chart? See if you guys have been paying attention. Uptrend, downtrend. Where are we? Go U for up, D for down. And then when does the trend stop? Uptrend or downtrend? Right? So we're in a downtrend, right? So if we're in a downtrend... What do we look for? We look for two trades, right? We look for a momentum trade and a retracement trade. So what do we want to do? That first green bar that forms on gold today, you should have been looking for a sell right when that bar formed. You should be looking for a sell right when this bar formed, right? Then the momentum shifted up. These are two big sells in gold today. The trend chart catches. The cool thing about the trend chart what it does, it narrows down your trading. It narrows down your trading so you know where to look for trades. Instead of sitting on your hands, staring blindly at an indicator, that means nothing. Moving averages, worthless. Divergence, worthless by itself. Stochastics, worthless. Moving to average convergence divergence will get you killed. They are totally worthless because they're not order flow, right? I'm qualifying a trade knowing I have a trend filter built into these already. I know it turns green. The trend filter is down. I'm looking for to sell. I'm looking to sell. Let me look at my trend Fibonacci chart. I mean my retracement chart and try to get in on a retracement. Let me look at my momentum. If it's all red here, when it's all red, let me stare at my momentum chart. Please give me some Fibonacci arrows. Okay? So this is a great way to let you understand. What turned the market is when you got it back inside, you start closing back inside right there. It told us you can switch gears. Sure enough, our SIM dots called it, and we got a Fibonacci arrow that fired right at the low here, and you know it. We got a Fibonacci arrow that fired right here on gold on the way back up, and it rallied hard. Those are your two buys. Those are your two sells. Just looking at a trend chart. That's without looking at anything else. 
just by staring at a trend chart. If I go to the S&P and I want to see where's the most important spot on the S&P to, to sell today or buy today, I want to find the ideal spot for me to get into the S&P. Where can I catch some traders, some wrongly positioned traders in the morning? Right there's your spot. There's your spot right there. That spot told you to catch your biggest trade in the S&P right there. That was a 29, uh, what, 29.12 all the way to 29.02, a 10-point S&P trade. I'm, this is not scalping for a tick, not scalping for three ticks, four ticks. We're trying to get high reward to risk trades. We're trying to get the high reward to risk trades. That told me right there, that was my most important inflection point on the S&P. All right, let me go back. This important inflection point right here again. We actually hit Fibonacci arrow fired. There, Fibonacci arrow fired here. Momentum trade fired there on the S&P, another big one. These three spots are your biggest spots on the S&P 500. Now, if you go to NASDAQ futures, let's say, you're going to see a lot of trades. I mean, it's just crazy, but it catches the volatile spots. You talk about a market that's very volatile, and, and one of our long-term members, Earl, loves this market. It goes very well. But if you take a look at the market, it is extremely volatile, but you get a lot of setups. You get a lot of setups during the day. So if I was trading this market, let's just say here, and we're coming down, I would love to sell this retracement right when that green bar came in. I would love to buy this retracement, right? As we're rolling back over, this is a small buy, and this is a big sell over here. It's a huge sell right here. Buy, sell that in a heartbeat. It's a sell. So you can use the trend chart. There's a lot of great, like if I'm moving down, right, and I'm all red. This is a great thing about NASDAQ futures. If I'm all red like this below all three moving averages, Right? If I'm all red like that and I see a momentum, I mean I see a momentum trade, arrow fib arrow comes up, you're good to go. All right. So like I said, you can trade any market you want. I mean you can trade a slower market, the Russell 2000 uh, minis, but it's the same thing. You're gonna look for the same exact type of setup. You're you're gonna look to buy these inflection points to get in the morning here. This is a huge sell. I mean just a screaming sell in the in the Russell 2000. Right here, it caught the wrongly position traders here. That's a Fibero fired. Wrongly position traders got caught, and the Fibero fired right at that high also. Fibero fired here on a momentum setup. So there's two retracement setups, and I had a momentum setup that fired there because you're all red. Green came in. Fibero fired right there. Fibero fired right there on my sim dots. So it's the same technique. It doesn't matter what market you look at, right? Nice job, Earl. Good job, bud. It doesn't matter, right? It really doesn't matter. Can we trade off the trend chart? Use a trend chart for direction, but you can use it, but your stop, if you trade strictly off the trend chart, your stops are going to be doubled than using a 4 sim Renko market delta chart. You go from 11 tick stop to right around 20 to 22. If you just use trend chart by itself, what Dave's saying is, can I do this? Can I do this? And he's exactly right. It's, it's very effective. And if you're willing to take larger move, I mean stops, is you can do this. I don't educate this because I hate large stops for traders. A lot of traders don't have sizable accounts. But let's say the green bar comes in. What Dave is saying is this. That green bar comes in. You know you caught the rolling position traders. You blow all three moving averages. He's saying let's wait for this green, green bar to print red to show there's distribu distribution. Green bar prints red. Let's open it up at this bar. You go short. You can short there. If you do that, your stop loss would be two ticks above that swing high. Now, let's look at the stop, what that would be. And I'm going to show you the difference in stops, just to show Dave. If I look at stops, I know in a live trade, even a long time frame, I'm pretty much getting filled at the low of the bar. So that right there is your fill. So low of the bar would be 81.20. The high of this bar is 83.60. So you can see you got around 20, what, 24, 23. So you're going to be right around double if you do that. Now, it can be smaller, but I'm saying use a trend chart and then use the, the, the smaller time frame, the market delta, for an average 11 tick stop to time the trade. But go back, Dave, and you'll see that if you use that, it's going to double your stop. That's what it comes out to. It's usually right around 22 ticks you're risking. But you only have one or two trades a day sometimes. 
you know, especially if it's trending hard down, there'll be days where this trend chart is 100% accurate. And you've seen it, you're a long-term member. You'll see days in crude, it'll be five for five off of, off of doing that technique. You know, six for six, three for three, four for four. So it's great. If you use that technique, use it for trend days only. Because if you're trying to catch a big move in one of the markets, and you can see where the big trends are, it'll look like this. Okay? But that's what we try to do, guys and gals. We're trying to let trying to trade only two setups retracement and momentum trading right there retracement and momentum all right 